In this video, I'll be explaining why many cryptocurrency projects could be successful and yet the tokens may never rise in value. That's right, the projects you love may someday have worthless tokens even though the project is successful. The reason relates to an issue called token velocity. This may sound confusing, but don't worry, I'm going to be breaking this down and making it very easy to understand throughout this video. This video will serve as the beginner explanation. Don't forget to check out the advanced explanation video too. The link will be in the description. To explain token velocity, let's use an example. Let's imagine an application such as a decentralized Uber. We'll call this Carfare. Carfare have run an ICO just like many projects, during which time they sold tokens. In total, there are 10 million fare tokens. To keep this simple, let's assume a starting price of 10 cents per token. What is the purpose of these tokens? Fare tokens are used as payment tokens. In other words, if you're using the Carfare app, you have to buy tokens so that you can pay the driver in these tokens. You can't pay in US dollars, you have to pay in the fare tokens. To keep things simple, Carfare has decided to sell tokens to customers on the application. After all, who wants to go to the hassle of logging onto an exchange and buying tokens just for a lift in a car? Now, let's introduce our first character, Adam. Adam needs a ride to his next destination, so he logs onto Carfare and books a car to pick him up. The ride takes 10 minutes and costs him $10. But remember, this is Carfare, so Adam must pay in fair tokens. As a result, the ride will cost Adam 100 tokens. These tokens are purchased by Adam on the application at the end of the journey. He transfers them to the driver Bob, who immediately cashes them out via the app for US dollars. In total, it took just one minute between Adam buying tokens and Bob cashing them out. This is very important, so make sure you remember this. This is also the token velocity, i.e. the speed at which tokens flow through the car fare system. Now let's introduce our second example to illustrate how most investors think. We're looking at car fare again, but now we're gonna imagine there are 500 customers. To keep it simple, We'll imagine everyone has the same journey time as Adam had in our last example. So that is 10 minutes. At the end of the 10 minutes, 500 people each have to buy 100 tokens. In total, this is 50,000 tokens. In our first example, only 100 tokens were required. After we added more people, this number rose to 50,000 tokens. From this, we can see the more people using the application clearly results in higher demand for tokens. Higher demand equals higher token prices, right? Not exactly. This is where we introduce the issue of token velocity. Many people believe that the price of tokens is simply determined by the supply and demand. In a way, this is true, but it isn't entirely correct if token velocity isn't accounted for also. Let's add a further 500 people to our example to bring our total number up to 1,000 people requiring lifts. If we double the number, we'll surely be doubling the demand for tokens, right? Let's draw it out and see what happens. We're using car fare again, but now there are 1,000 people using the application. For this example, we're going to stagger the two groups. In other words, for group 1, the first 500 people, the journey will take 10 minutes. This is the same as our first two examples. For the other 500 users though, the journey takes 15 minutes. Let's start our stopwatches and see what happens next. It's been 10 minutes. Our ride has just finished for our first 500 users. They each pay 100 fare tokens to their drivers. Just as before, 50,000 tokens have been bought by the users, sent to the drivers, and subsequently sold by those drivers for US dollars. These tokens are now back in the Carfare application, ready 
for the next group of people to use them as well. Fast forward a few more minutes and our second group is finishing their ride. Just like before, the users buy tokens on the application and send them to the drivers. Do you notice what happened this time though? Our second group has just used the same 50,000 tokens as our first group. Even though we doubled the number of people using the application, the same number of tokens, 50,000, were required. Let that sink in for a second. The demand for tokens at any given time was the same when there were 500 people using the application as when there were 1,000 people. Constant demand equals constant token price. Therefore, increasing the number of users didn't increase the token price. This is why the concept of token velocity is so important. As I mentioned at the start, projects can be successful. They can get a lot of users on their application and yet the token price may never increase. So why did this occur? It's because car fare tokens suffer from high token velocity. That still sounds a bit confusing, right? So let's break it down a bit further. On car fare, in just one minute, users can buy tokens, send them to the driver, and the driver will cash them out. As soon as these tokens are back in the application, they are ready to be used by the next person. Therefore, even if there is greater demand, as there was in our second example, there will always be an excess supply. What happens then if we reduce that token velocity? Let's imagine our example again, but instead the new time taken between the users buying tokens and the drivers cashing them out is 10 minutes. So rather than it being just one minute as before, we're changing that to 10 minutes. In this example, group one would still be holding their 50,000 tokens when group two purchased a further 50,000 from the app. In other words, group two would have been buying 50,000 new tokens. What's the result? The total demand has risen to 100,000 tokens. This isn't a perfect example, I know, but this video was made to highlight one very important point. If tokens flow through the system very quickly, each one can be reused very fast, thus reducing the demand for other tokens and causing an excess supply. If we slow down the speed at which tokens flow through the system, i.e. slow down the token velocity, New tokens must regularly be used as the old tokens haven't yet returned to the application. This results in the excess supply decreasing over time. And once that excess supply is zero, raising the demand at that point will then raise the token prices. Before we move on to the conclusion, I wanna say the token velocity is a pretty complex concept. It's not something that any of us have encountered before cryptocurrencies, and it may not be immediately obvious. So if you need to watch this video a couple of times to really grasp what's going on, please feel free to do so. The conclusion. So far, we've concluded the token velocity is unbelievably important when evaluating the long-term potential of a cryptocurrency. The next question in your mind is probably, what should we look out for and what should we avoid? I'm not gonna overload your brain with too much information today. Instead, what I'm gonna do is this. Number one, I'll be creating an advanced explanation of token velocity, including formulas for all of you nerds out there like me. So if you want a greater understanding of the concept, that video will be released very shortly. Number two, I'll be creating more videos in the future explaining what you should be looking out for and giving examples of projects which are effectively reducing token velocity and others which aren't. In fact, depending on when you're watching this video, these videos may have already been released. Open up the description now and have a look. If you're seeing a couple of links in there, it means those videos have been released and you can continue learning about such an important topic 
when investing in cryptocurrencies, that token velocity really is. If you can't see the links yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell next to it so you don't miss out when those videos are released. From Tom here at Crypto Gurus, thank you so much for watching and we will speak again very soon.